Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of Heroes of the Storm we're going to be playing Maiev and things are going to be a lot better because we have teammates that we know and trust and I cannot tell you how important that is for playing this character. This is a YouTube video after all though so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe your heart out. This will be the last one of four for the week and we'll be back next week with some more stuff for you. But all that said, we're on Dragonshire today, and the team comps are going to be Maiev, Lucio, Sonia, Nazebo, and Blaze versus Ariel Stitches, Valera, Orphea, and Gul'dan. Now, the oh, the whole of the argument with Maiev is she can be extremely strong in the right hands, played by a skilled player, uh, and she could just be downright OP, uh, according to a lot of people's opinions. I do not think I am one of the people who is good enough to play her in that manner. So, I've got my teammates. We just yanked four people back towards them, and we need to start talking about our abilities because we can get lost in thought real quick with this character. So, our Q is called Fan of Knives. It is going to throw a fan. It's literally a crescent shape. I hate that it's a crescent shape, but that's the way they decided to do it. And it's going to do a really teeny amount of damage. It's actually just a little bit more than one auto attack with Maiev. The uh, good news is that we drop the cooldown to 0.5 seconds and refund the mana cost if we manage to hit more than one hero with the ability. So, all that being said, we always want to aim for multiple targets with our fan of knives so we can get not only the mana reduction, but the cooldown reduction, the resets, and just throw knives at people so often and maybe kill them because like i said it does do a very small amount of damage Ugh. our second ability is called umbral bind that is going to be a an empowered auto attack that's going to cleave and you're going to see it right there latch on to stitches it's going to apply a tether to whichever targets are hit by the cleaving auto attack and when the character leaves um, the the tether range, they are going to get pulled towards Maiev. So, if you've ever seen uh, Grumpy Karen walking her dog, when the dog goes to sniff a flower or some grass or something nice, and the Karen starts yanking on the dog because she's a grumpy, toxic old lady, that's kind of what Maiev is doing with the tethers. So, if you need the comparison, there it is. I am amazed that he missed that hook on a just completely still target but here we are i'll take it i'm alive everything's good i've got my tank right here with me in the middle lane so i don't have to be worried about a whole lot and there's the lucio as well can we kill the stitches i don't think ariel is possible until now maybe blink forward onto her which is going to lead us into our third ability. It is called the Shadow of Vengeance. No, it's not. Spirit of Vengeance. I was close. And what this is going to do is send out a shade of Maiev along a path. It is going to travel along that path, hit the apex, and then return to the point that you cast it at. All while this ability is out in the open, it is going to... Uh, give you the opportunity to blink to wherever the shade is along that path. So, assuming it's gone to a place that you want it to be, like right there, uh, you can have a lot of mobility going on with this, uh, this skill. Mobility with this ability. You're welcome. And it's probably the... I'd say it's one of the more important parts of playing Maiev because you do kind of have to be aware of the timing of where the shade is at, where it is going to be when you blink to it, and if you throw it in the wrong direction, you can really fuck your shit up. So, now that that's out of the way, we can talk about our trait, which is arguably one of the most fun parts of Maiev. Vault of the Warden, Vault of the Wardens, Vault of the Wardens, yes. It's, I, no refunds. So Vault of the Wardens is going to let us um, it's going to let us jump up into the air for 0.75 seconds, and when we are doing that, we're completely immune to all crowd control and all CC, but 
we are going to be able to move just a slight amount while this is going on as well. So, if you're ever tethered onto a person and you see a whole bunch of CC coming at your face, but you want to dodge it so you get the tether pull, all you got to do is hit your D button and suddenly you're completely unimpeded and you can still move forward. Stitches has a huge health bar, but it's never going to be enough to stop four people from just descending upon him like the thousand nations of the Persian army. Um, right, so now that all of our basic abilities are out of the way, we could talk about Maev's ultimates. Uh, Maev has two very good ultimates. The first one's called Warden's Cage, and basically it just makes a whole bunch of copies of uh, Maev in a circle. And if any enemy hero comes into contact with any of those copies, they're going to be knocked towards the center of the circle. These copies don't do damage, and once they get knocked towards the center, uh, the, the copies are going to go away. Ooh, nice boop to get the tether damage. Getting a lot of Phantom Knives resets here. I'm just going to dodge some damage real quick. Can we make it out? Yes, we can. And we got our Lucio out as well. Oh my god, the enemy team is pissed right now. So, um, now Warden's Cage, it's good. It's good. There's no arguing that it's good. But the other ultimate that Maev has access to is called Containment Disc. Containment Disc is on a 40 second cooldown and it is a very long reaching skill shot that is going to put a character in stasis for four seconds. In being in that stasis, they are also blinded, uh, and not just regular blinded, they're locked in that crystal and they can't see anything. The entire screen goes dark for them, aside from them sitting in the, the crystal. Like that, you can see Ariel right now having a grand old time, not being able to heal her stitches, and that is just the power of taking people out of the fight with that ability. She's going to die to the Umbral Bind pull, and I am just on such a burner this game. Oh my god, it feels so good. Heater? Maybe that's the term. Sports terms. I'm good at them. But I guess with that out of the way, now that you are aware, I like Containment Disc more than Warden's Cage, and I, over the last probably 15 games, I think I picked Warden's Cage maybe twice, if that. But I just love Containment Disc so much. It's so good. I love it, and I will swear by it for as long as I play my app. Now, the build for my app that we're playing today is pretty standard, I believe. Um, there's nothing on the enemy team that makes me want to deviate too hard for a lot of percentage damage or anything like that. Ooh! We're just going to cap off Stitches real quick. And then get the Valera since she's so split off from her team. Are we? Nope, she's going to get crystalled. I need to leave. We're still going in under the tower. We're going to lose our blaze. That's okay. Uh, tank for everyone else's life. A little bit of a... A little bit of a... Uh, disassociation. Dis dis disconnect? Disconnect. That's what I wanted. From the, uh, the engage there. But that's no big deal. We still have plenty of opportunity to make big plays. Uh, but back, back to the build. So, level 1, we're picking up Bonds of Justice. This is the questing talent for Maev. And in picking up this talent, what you're going to allow yourself to do is get more damage off of your Umbral Bind. Your Umbral Bind is far and away the most uh, important part of your CC for the character. And not only that, is it's going to line up a lot of damage for your team because of the talents that we're going to take. Huge jet propulsion from our blaze. We're just going to throw Ariel into the cocoon real quick here, and that's okay. They all got away, but at the same time, Orphea died, and the enemy team can't cap the dragon, so that was a lot better than it could have been. Um, a lot of this game, you're going to see me throw my... Uh, my containment disc on either Ariel or Stitches. Uh, mainly so that we can get into that Gul'dan and Orphea and Valera. They're nice and squishy. Uh, anybody who's not in the disc, oh my god, he's actually going to live. That's okay. It's fine. He's He can get away. We're, we got two level lead, we have the talent advantage, and I have stuff to talk about that's not what we're doing on the map right now. So, um, after hitting five people with the tethers, 
and this is secondary targets, by the way, you have to hit uh, heroes that are not directly clicked on. I, I know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically, the auto attack that you turn into cleaving with this ability, you're going to use it to latch on to um, any one thing, and then if there are things in the area to cleave to, it will also hook a tether to those if they're heroes. So, you can auto attack gate walls, you can auto attack minions, you can auto attack anything, really. And from there, you can see how big the cleave is there. You can latch on to a lot of people. Uh, the reason that we have 14 stacks right now is because the enemy team likes to clump up a lot and they like to hang around minions like it's no one's fucking business. I don't want to stay there and fight with her because I am not a duelist character. Everything about my Ev is built for AoE damage and team fights and stuff needs to... Oh my god, that hook. I guess it makes sense. He wants to check the bush, but... That was... That was just... Hey, unspeakably lucky. Um, not that he really did anything with it, but it was, it was cool. Anyway... Uh, so once we get 10 tethers applied to, or 5 tethers applied with Umbral Bind and pulled on secondary targets, we're going to get 75 extra damage on the pull itself. And then once we hit 10 targets, we're going to get 30% extra damage on the, um, on the actual auto attack. So he's sitting there ready to die. It's okay, we don't need to go for him. That's fine. We can let him go. Um, the ult's on a 40 second cooldown, so using it just off cooldown is perfectly okay with me. Uh, but anyway, having the Umbral Bind deal as much burst damage as it does is really insanely, actually, so good. Not only that, but we're taking some armor reduction on it at level 7 with Bonds of Corruption, uh, and that armor reduction does apply to the damage that we do with the Bind. So, we're gonna slap a person with a tether, we're going to rip them out of their comfort zone and deal 10% more damage on top of everything that we've already added to the ability, and they're just going to have a bad time. And it's probably... <sighs> I thought she was going to try to run away, seeing as how there's four people, but she didn't. She went back in for some reason. Um, right, but the, the damage that you can get with Umbral Bind with this build is just fucking nutty. Um, and the level 1 quest is also infinite, so every time that you do that... Not only are you getting the two quest rewards, you're getting 15 extra damage on the pull damage. Oh no. E uh, she's gone. Yep. Blaze is... Blaze is dead. Nothing we can do to save her. There's too many keeps in the way. Too many. Yeah. That's okay. Um, But back to the build. So, level 4, we're going to pick up Sudden Vengeance. This is only level 4 talent. My god, I'm getting so distracted. After blinking with Spirit of Vengeance, the shadow explodes and is going to deal damage to heroes in the area for 6% of their maximum health. This ability is my favorite at this tier because not only is having maximum health percent damage really good, it's also insanely good for helping my Ev to clear kills that may have run away. So if you have people, you know, running off into the ether with 6% of their maximum health, suddenly you can blink on to their faces and they don't exist anymore and it's just so incredibly strong considering how much damage it can do I'm not positive why blade dance is everyone's favorite talent at this tier um, it just doesn't seem as good to me maybe I'm just bad at my ev but I don't like blade dance in any circumstance I just I will always take sudden vengeance and I think I'm okay with that. Oh no. She got booped so she didn't get hooked. It's unfortunate. We're just going to hold Ariel in place real quick. We want everybody to come on over here and get the kill on the angel. All those toads. She had to crystal for it and she just set herself up for another. I'm not even going to follow that train of thought because everything that I can come up with is sexual in some way or form. So our level 7 talent, I mentioned it a little bit, it is going to reduce 10 armor on characters that are pulled. It's also going to slow people by 20%, and both those effects last for 10 seconds. 
Again, really, really, really good for buffing the burst damage that Maiev gets with Umbral Bind, but also really, really good for buffing damage from the rest of your team on those pull targets. So it's really awesome. Our level 13 talents called Shadow Armor, everything on the 13 tier is going to uh, give Maiev armor in some form or fashion. You have Bladed Armor, which is going to give you 5 armor per hero hit with your Q, up to 20. Uh, Chain Gang is going to give you 35 armor for 4 seconds if you tether multiple people. I missed her. Um, and then the one that I like the most, Shadow Armor, is going to give you 20 armor when you blink to your spirit. And then for, uh, I want to say 4 seconds after? It's 3.5 seconds, but you can increase the duration by... Um, you can increase the duration by auto attacking. So, having more armor for longer in the thick of things. Really, really, really good. I cannot believe I missed it. It was for sure that they were going to walk forward, but it's okay. We're just slapping them with another tether and watching them all disappear. Oh. At 16, we did pick up Cruel Chain. Cruel Chain is... Uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but just a little while ago when we killed Stitches, we used Cruel Chain to increase the damage of our bind pull. So what this does is every time that you deal damage to a target that is tethered, uh, you are going to increase the damage that the eventual pull is going to do to them. And you're also going to get 25% move speed while that's happening. So basically what we did uh, was tethered stitches, punched him a couple times, and then left our tether circle, and that pulled him back. I think it did... It was upwards of 800 damage, I'm sure. Uh, but it is extremely good for killing single targets with that ability, even if it is a little bit difficult to actually use. Uh, but the move speed on it, really, really good, just purely for helping yoink targets. The extra damage is just kind of icing on the cake. Um, and it does go up to 150%, so every time that you deal damage to a character... Uh, can we get over there to help? Yes, we can! It's gonna drop Gul'dan in the crystal, get in the bunker, and then hop out after we drop a couple flamethrowers. Good stuff, team. Thank you for that sound barrier, I appreciate it. Even though Blaze needed it a little bit more, that's unfortunate. Uh, but anyway, our level 20 talent... My Ev does not get ultimate upgrades, unfortunately. Uh, not that I think she needs them, because both of her ultimates are fucking OP when used correctly. So, But the three that you get are Shadow Orbs, and my favorite of the three is called Shadow Orb Shadow Strike. It is a point-and-click ability that is going to reduce the armor of a character by 20, and it is going to slow them by 30% for 4 seconds. Uh, not only that, but you get this ability back not by having it cooldown. You get it back by doing spell damage to people. So, all the damage that we're doing with Umbral Bind to multiple targets, all the knife damage that we're doing, all the blink damage that we're doing, that all counts to recharging the ability. So, in essence, if you use Shadow Strike, hit a whole bunch of knife resets, you can have Shadow Strike up again within a matter of seconds, rather than... You know, maybe waiting on a full 10 to 20 second cooldown for a regular ability. It's pretty fucking cool. Uh, and then having that armor reduction just really helps Maiev single out those targets that she's pulling and allowing her team to really just blow them up. Oh, man. Uh, and again, I just want to stress the fact it is night and day playing this character by yourself and then with people you trust. So playing by yourself is infinitely more difficult with Maiev, but playing with the team that you know is at least listening to what you're doing or watching what you're doing, uh, you are going to have so much better a time, I promise you. Because when you're playing solo, all those solo motherfuckers will just let you walk into certain death going for a tether instead of even being remotely a distraction and it sucks oh, I feel so bad playing this character by yourself so that being said that's no reason not to play my Ev she's still incredibly strong incredibly busted and you can get lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff out of this hero but 
If you're just starting out on her, maybe pick up a couple friends to help you figure things out, and it won't be such a disappointing mess in quick match like it normally is, you know? That's it for this week, though. In case you need it to build one more time, we're going to start with Bonds of Justice, Sudden Vengeance at 4, Bonds of Corruption at 7, Containment Disc at 10, Shadow Armor at 13, Cruel Chain at 16, and then Shadow Strike at 20. Everything on this build is all about your W and your E. Q resets are cool, but ultimately, I only really want to tech into Q talents if I need some really, really big percentage damage, and I was not feeling it this game. Thank you for watching. I will be back next week, but I will see you there. GG's. Have a nice day.